Hello guys, my name is Paris Thawar. You know, otherwise I'm a pretty brave guy. I mean, look at all the chest muscles and the beautiful face, the ravishing personality. Now, when you look at me, you're probably going to be like, this guy obviously has no fears. But that is not true. So I thought maybe in this video, since you're still getting to know me, and since this is my new channel, where some of you may just be joining in for the first time, it is possible that some of you have never even heard of me. So normally I don't really get scared. I've been living alone for the past 15 years. And this is just the list of my things that I am petrified of. Why am I talking like that? Alright, let's start with the very basic things. Yeah, ghosts. I'm a bit of a wuss when it comes to ghosts. I started living alone when I was very, very young. I was about 15 then. Because in my head, I thought when I was going to be sleeping, and you know, Paris was like, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be someone who's just standing there, watching. There'd be a day when I would open my eyes and there'd be somebody right in front of my face saying, I've been watching you. And that idea would freak the hell out of me, okay? Oddly enough, they would always believe where I've come from that if you're naked for some strange reason, a ghost will not come near you. So I've been told these uh, tales of my grandfather who was once going on a bicycle somewhere through a place which had a kabristan, you know, because there's always a graveyard and a ghost story. And he suddenly felt that there was somebody sitting behind him. So he did the thing that most logical people would do. He got off the cycle and he went out and he took out his willy and he started peeing. So the reason for that is because they believe if you show your penis, the ghost will run away. So I would always be naked at home thinking, I'm warding off evil. This is my way of being. But one of my other fears in life, oh my god, I'm petrified of this one. I'm a hypochondriac. I think even if the tiniest thing is wrong, the worst is gonna happen. And I'm the kind who will be having a headache and I will convince myself that I've got a brain tumor. If anything goes slightly wrong, I'm obviously already in the ER and I'm thinking the worst case scenario, scenario, people writing eulogies to me and expressing how they deep fondness for me and how I am an amazing guy who is just like, you know, like, you know, like one of my biggest fears is that something is going to happen to me medically. Like, I don't want that. Now, I know they always say that you should think happy thoughts. You should just think about beautiful, lovely, beautiful sunsets and sunrises and whatnot. But an occasional brain tumor will come in there. I'm not even joking. I have woken up my best friend in the middle of the night and I have said, I need to go to the hospital. I think I have a tumor. He said, why? I'm like, um, I have a headache. <laughs> He was like, shut up and go back to sleep. I have to tell you this, okay? You have to see this. Can you see this? Can you see that little bump? Oh, this is so difficult. Oh. Okay, can you see this little bump here? Oh my god, why is the camera not catching it? Turns out there's a little there's a little swelling or a bump there now, which I've had for a while now. The really weird part is I used to never have it. So I was, you know, lying in bed with one of these girls I was dating at the time. And while she's got her hair on my chest, and she's like, yeah, babu, so no, do do boo boo, lulu. I don't know why girls call you these. Weird names, but anyway, so she was lying around and her pussy was right there. And she really did have a cat. So, you know, she's there, she's stroking me, and her pussy is like, I'm gonna stop saying pussy. <laughs> pussy! And while she was sort of stroking my chest gently, she says, Papa, what is this? I swear to God, it was just like a little tiny bump. It was like, it was like Pimple's little child. It was that small, okay? She's like, Babu, Babu, you should get it tested. It could be something wrong. Could be something wrong. Could be something wrong. Oh my God, that was it. That was the start of a whole week of just sleepless nights for me. I thought it was horrible, something horrible was gonna happen to me. She made it sound like I could have breast cancer. Uh, news flash, men can also get breast cancer. So anyway, turns out I thought it was that, so you know, and, and I read up online and whatnot. And they said the best way to know if a swelling is a breast cancer tissue or whatnot is just to be able to squeeze it a little bit. If any pus begins to ooze out, you know, it's just a pimple. If not, you might have trouble. So I've reached home, I've taken off my clothes to scare away ghosts and now in this case to check for a little cancerous tissue. Anyway, so I've done all of that and I have begun to squeeze with all my mighty heart. I have decided this is going to be the biggest squeeze of my life and it possibly was. So anyway, so I began squeezing, squeezing, squeezing and obviously this is one of those like I, which I've come to know much later. I had a small sort of abscess or a cyst or so I began squeezing it so hard that a cyst or an abscess is basically this membrane and then there's some shit inside that, okay? What I did was because I squeezed it so hard, this membrane essentially burst, crap began to come out. So anyway, the moment stuff has started to come out, I'm like, yeah, I don't have breast cancer. <laughs> and uh, I got really happy and I called and said, you know, because of course, I'm talking to her in my studly voice, not knowing that inside I'm the pussy. I have to stop saying pussy. Pussy. And I'm like, hey, you know, everything is okay. Here's the problem though, because I burst that little whatever outside shell with the membrane, now that little membrane is just stuck in there and it's just there. So instead of healing, it's just sort of hanging around, which is why I have that bump. Oh my God, I want you to be able to see it. I think you can see it. Oh, you can see it now. Look, 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 look. My other fear, which is such a first world problem, is the fact that I feel... But this problem is more existential than anything else. It's that I'm going to die alone. 
All right, so here's the thing. I decided fairly early in life that I did not want to get married. This is about to get real, okay? The fear is that when I'm getting older, I'll suddenly be alone because all of these people who already have spouses and children, they'll all sort of live their own life. And as a single person, no matter how attractive and beautiful and gorgeous you are, I mean, come on, I'm going to be sexy even when I'm like 50. That's the thing. I don't want to get married and I don't want to have children. But I think also your kids are at some level your insurance policy, right? So when you grow up, they're going to sort of take care of you and they're going to be like sort of taking you for walks and paying for some rubbish that you need later or cleaning up your shit. You, you need someone to do all of that, right? So which is why I keep sort of getting freaked out by this. So I called my friend Rupani Vishwana one of these days, who's a very close friend of mine. She said, darling, honey, you're overthinking it. It's fine. And that's the thing. I think all of us live in a world where we don't really have fears. One of the fears that I perpetually have is when I'm flying. Oh my God. If I'm on a two hour flight, I've said the Hanuman Chalisa like maybe like 10 times in that whole flight, all right? <laughs> I'm going to let you into a secret, okay? When I get into the plane, oh God, this sounds so moronic. Should I tell you? Should I not tell you? <laughs> this is really silly. So when I'm about to get into a plane, I swear I'm not kidding. I really do this. All right. So when I'm about to just enter the fuselage, I'm going to put my hand on the fuselage from the outside. So I'll touch the plane from the outside and I'll say the Gayatri Mantra quickly seven times. Okay, quickly. If I can't say it quickly enough, I'll try and sort of pretend to sort of fix my lace or fix my shirt to do something. But I will make sure I do it seven times. I do it for the benefit of all the passengers because everyone's safety is in my hands. Lord Hanuman and me are in charge of making sure that everyone reaches the ground. I take flight safety very seriously. That's the one place you have no bloody, you have no control over what's happening. What else scares me? I get scared of... I'm perpetually scared that my phone's battery is going to run off. I'm not even joking. I don't know why. It's almost like if there's a word for it, I have phono battery phobia. I should call it something fancier. Phone battery dying phobia. P B D P. Oh, I have PDPB. This is a very weird diagnosis to have. I'm not even joking. I perpetually will charge my phone no matter where I see a socket. I will just put it in. <laughs> that goes for other things as well. I'm always happy to put stuff in. Hashtag dirty joke. Now, even if my battery is like 92%, I will just put it in if I can find it. And of course, one of my other really big fears is the fact that, you know, because this is a new channel, I'm not going to have enough subscribers. So here's what you can do. You see the subscribe button? Yeah, it's right there. It's right there. It is right there. Just click on it and subscribe because really, you will help someone get over their fear. Isn't that noble? Alright, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. All my socials are at Paris Tomar. And if you've got some really crazy fears of your own, I want to know what they are in the comment section. I will see you next time. Until then, don't be scared. You be strong. <coughs> that was not a very superhero grunt. Hang on. <coughs> Clearly, I can't do this. Bye. What's your body got to do? What?